Building a gaming PC on a budget has gotten tougher than ever with prices through the roof, especially on RAM. But in my opinion, a build like this is one of the best values that you can put together for under $350. And trust me, it's actually punching way above its weight class. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting together a budget gaming PC that puts down some really good performance. This actually exceeded my expectations. And again, like I mentioned, I mean, prices are absolutely ridiculous on everything right now from motherboards, CPUs, GPUs, and especially RAM. If you look at the prices, it's pretty outrageous. So putting something together for cheap is kind of hard, but you can definitely do it. Don't expect to go all new parts. You will have to go used. And the site I use is eBay. I'll leave some links in the description. You might notice I've got a couple things missing. Well, at least one thing, the front panel on this unit. And this is going to be the base of our build. In this video, I've got a lot to go over and a lot to test. So before we get started, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by URCD keys. The main thing I pick up over here are Windows 11 Pro keys. And right now, if you use code ETA, you can get 25% off. So at checkout, we'll just enter the code ETA. That's going to bring the price down to 2331. They're going to email you that key and then you can activate Windows. Speaking of that, let's head over to a new PC that I recently built. As you can see, we're running Windows 11. And from settings, we're going to go to activation settings. It's going to tell us that we're not active. We don't have a key installed. So we're just going to paste it right in here. Choose next. It's going to activate Windows for us and we're ready to go. If you're in need of cheap Windows keys, I'll leave a link in the description. And remember, you can use code ETA for 25% off. So like I mentioned, this is going to be the base of our build, and I got this pretty cheap because the front panel's missing on it and it doesn't have a GPU, but I've got an older one here with the front panel. I don't know if I'm going to rob it from it or not. These were really popular a few years ago, and you could pick them up from Walmart for pretty cheap, and the one that has the front panel on it here only supports up to a Ryzen 3000. But since this is uh, HP's TG series, there's a few different panels that do work up front. You can go with a nice wood grain. You can go with that silver. Obviously, you can go with the gaming centric version, but all four of these will fit a case like this. Now, I'm not sure how many of these are going to be sold without front panels. Most of the time, you'll probably find one with the panel up front. But I actually lucked out, and to some people, it might not be luck, but it was cheaper because it didn't have the front panel. It does have the side panel. And this was listed for 180 or best offer. What I usually do on eBay is set up a notification. So I know I wanted a Pavilion TG01. So every time one's posted, doesn't matter what it is, it'll show up in my notifications. Ran across this one, 180 or best offer. I offered 165, got it shipped to the house. This has a Ryzen 7 5700G. So we've got eight cores, 16 threads. It also has 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now it doesn't have the front panel, but it does have a 256 gigabyte M.2 SSD and no GPU. We've got an iGP with the 5700G. And since this is the gaming version, we've got a 400 watt power supply with an eight pin PCIe connector. Now my original plan for this was to install an Intel Arc B570. Brand new, these are 200 bucks. They've got 10 gigs of VRAM. It's a decent card, but unfortunately, these PCs will not boot up with an ARC GPU installed. Something is stopping it from booting completely, and it does look like the motherboard here does support resizable bar, but there's not many options in the BIOS, so we can't toggle it on or off. And I actually don't think that's the issue. You can usually get them going without resizable bar. Something else is weird, but I just couldn't get it to work with several different ARC cards. Another option you have, obviously, NVIDIA, RTX 3060, 4060, something with dual fans that only requires one 8-pin PCIe connector. But I didn't want to go RTX. This is a 3060 with 12 gigs of VRAM. I wanted to go with the Radeon card, so I opted to use the Radeon RX 7600. This is the XFX Swift model. RX 6600 would also be a nice choice, and you can pick them up a bit cheaper, like 150 to 160. The 7600 used over on eBay, I wouldn't pay more than 180 for it. I got mine for 180, so I'm in the hole right now for 345, and there's nothing else I really need to add to this. We've got 16 gigs of RAM. I've got storage, uh, a 256 gigabyte M.2, which I will be running Windows from. That's not going to leave me much room for Steam games, so I usually use an external drive anyway. This is the Beetle X31 from Hynix. Uh, it's an SSD. You could also use a cheaper mechanical drive, get you like a two terabyte drive and install your Steam games there. This does have USB Type-C up front, so we've got a little faster transfer speeds. Should work out pretty well, and 256 will be plenty for the operating system here. 
you could always upgrade if you want to spend a little more. Now all we need to do is install the GPU, and there's actually a lot of room in here, but there is this tiny lip over here on the side with this uh, case. So with the XFX model, you can see it kind of hits it. I just need to bend the case out a bit to get it slotted down, but then we're good to go. I can go ahead and plug that 8-pin connector in. And once it's all together, it looks a little something like this. That GPU definitely fills that extra space up with this uh, case here. Would be nice to have a front panel, but as long as this thing performs good, I'm not worried about how it looks. Kind of a little sleeper setup. Something that you don't have to spend a lot of money on. And again, most of the time, you will find these with the front panel pre-installed. Okay, so here we are. Been up and running for a little while now. Rebooted a few times, getting all the new drivers installed. And so far, it's been working pretty well. As you can see, we've got that Ryzen 7 5700G. So we've got 8 cores, 16 threads. Obviously not the most powerful processor, but it should put down some decent performance for what we have. 16 gigs of RAM came pre-installed. It's at 3200, and I've seen these systems, if you use like, a, let's say aftermarket RAM, it'll default to 2400. So if you get the cheaper, like HP or even Dell that runs at 3200 mega transfers per second, it should boost up to this. Dual channel, that's all we've got here. We've got the AMD Radeon onboard graphics with the 5700G. But we're not going to be using that because we've got the Radeon RX 7600 here with 8 gigs of VRAM. So there was a few things that I did here. Uh, first up, obviously with a system like this, I mean, it's a HP pre-built. Not a lot of overclocking can go on. But from here, if we go to performance, we'll go to tuning. I just ran this to see what would happen. CPU overclock, it's an automatic overclock. So we're up by 200 megahertz. Not going to make a huge difference. I haven't run into any stability issues or anything, so I'm just going to leave it right there. I was surprised that I was actually able to do this on this pre-built HP. We could also overclock the GPU directly from here, but instead of overclocking any of the core, basically what I like to do is up the power limit on these, and uh, we've got the XFX model. Some of these may be different. You might be able to go up higher, but from something like Afterburner, our power limit here, uh, with this set to zero, it's at 100%. But with this card, we can go to 112%. So it should throw a little more wattage at it, allowing us to get up to those, uh, you know, higher clocks there. We could overclock on the core, but I'm just going to go with that power limit. It seems to do pretty well with the 7600 and even the RX 6600. I'm just going to apply that. And the last thing I wanted to talk about here was the PCIe bus on this system. So the card we have is the uh, 7600, the RX 7600 non-XT model. It should run at X8 4.0, but the slot is only X8 3.0. So we will be losing a little bit there, but I don't think it's going to make a huge difference. But just keep that in mind. And really, all that's left to do is get into some testing here. So we're going to check out some benchmarks, and then we're going to jump right into some gaming with this setup. First things first, wanted to check out the CPU with Geekbench 6. At the top, we've got the 5700G in the system. And remember, this is a Zen 3 based CPU. Single core, 2057, multi, 7778. And just to give you a little bit of a reference, something like the Ryzen 7700, which is based on Zen 5, comes in with a single core of 2917. And multi is way up there, even though it's still an 8 core, 16 thread part, up to 15,300. Checking out 3D Mark Steel Nomad, single core 2288, and our FPS there was 22.88. And finally, I've got Time Spy here. We got a pretty impressive score of 10,599. So I knew we weren't going to break any records with this. We've got a 5700G paired up with an RX 7600 non XT, but I still think we're going to be able to get some 1440p gaming done on this thing. When it comes to the RX 7600, I do consider it a 1440p high card, kind of like the RX 6600 with some FSR. We don't need as much here with the 7600, but with Red Dead 2, we're at high settings, FSR set to quality. We could take the settings up even more because we're over 100 FPS, but it still looks great like this. And I actually wasn't expecting to see this kind of wattage being pulled from the GPU itself. Like in some cases, it gets real close to doing 180 watts. That CPU, I did a little bit of testing, it's a 65 watt part, but in this system, it'll actually boost up to 80 for two minutes. So yeah, looking great here with this one. 
Next one I wanted to test was Cyberpunk 2077, where 1440p high with FSR set to quality. And if you take a look at our VRAM usage, I mean, we're right there almost at eight gigs at high, and that's the reason we're not running these at Ultra 1440. So 1080 Ultra with basically no FSR, the 7600 does a great job. Up to 1440, have to drop it down to high settings. I'm not above using FSR frame gen on this system. So with that enabled, we can now take it up to ultra quality, FSR frame gen on, and get over 120 FPS on average. I understand if you're not in a frame gen on a $2,000 GPU, but we're talking about a $350 PC here. I would run frame gen all day long if it worked like this on every game. Next up, we've got Forza Horizon 5 at 1440p Ultra with no FSR. Uh, this is just one of those games that's going to work really well on this system. 141 FPS on average. And just like we were talking about with Cyberpunk at Ultra, this has an extreme mode. This system can run it. I mean, it's got more than enough power. Unfortunately, you just don't have enough VRAM, only 8 gigs with the 7600. I also wanted to test out Spider-Man 2, and without frame gen, we're at 1440p medium, FSR set to balanced. So you can see we're over 90, up to 100 FPS, but in some cases I still see a dip under 60. It's just the game itself on the 7600. Always run into issues there. So at medium is where I'm at with 1440 here if I'm not using frame gen. And the final game I wanted to test here was Borderlands 4. We're at 1440p high with frame gen on. And even then, even on the 7600 with this game at high, you can still see some ghosting on the sides with uh, the shield up. And it really comes down to the game itself. I was hoping by now we'd have a lot more optimizations for different systems, but I always run into issues here and there with it. Overall, I do think it's a great performer, and given prices of parts right now on everything, I mean, this is probably your best bet going with something like this. And I'll tell you, there are a lot of these listed on eBay with the 3000 series Ryzen chip. I would actually stay away from that right now. I would try to at least get a 4000 series. 5000 is definitely the way to go. This 5700G performed way better than I thought it would. Plus, we've got a lot of different GPU choices. You could go with that RX 6600, 7600 that we have here, an RTX 3060, RTX 4060, or even an RTX 5050 would actually work out pretty decently in this system. It's not the prettiest or the fastest setup on the block, but for a budget PC that I paid a little under $350 for, I think it's a great performer. And if you're interested in putting something like this together, I will leave links in the description. And of course, with this setup, we've got all AMD. We've got that Radeon card, we can install SteamOS, and I'll have a video coming up soon, so keep an eye on the channel. want to go with the newer front panel before I do that. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. It'd be really cool if you could hit that like button and think about subscribing so you know when I post the next one. And like always, thanks for watching.